All right, folks, so I am here with Nick Page from Nick Page Photography. He's got a great YouTube channel uh, that really is dedicated to landscape photography. Now, I've done some landscape photography in my videos, but my channel is a little bit more about the camping and the overlanding. But, you know, the problem that I had when I decided that I wanted to do some landscape photography and kind of add that to my channel is it became almost a lot of pressure to try to find shots and it almost became so much pressure that I I just kind of really backed off from doing it and then I didn't I, I pretty much almost quit doing it on my channel and I'd kind of like to get back to adding a little bit more of that into my channel how do you kind of deal with going out and feeling that pressure that every video you have to produce a great landscape shot it's it's really tough I mean first of all like sometimes just the the pressure of trying to get a good photo spoils the whole experience anyways because i'm out there and i'm turning into a light snob there's not enough clouds and and sometimes the the pursuit of the perfect photo can spoil just the appreciation of just being outside so it, it is really tough and as you know like there's there's so much there's so many little pieces of effort that you have to put into making a good video like all the b-roll and you can put in all that effort and then if you don't get a photo it's such an anticlimactic video that it was like well we'll just scrap all that work that i just did so it's it is really tough but i've discovered that you know, especially my followers they actually appreciate showing my failures a bit so if I do go out and, and I don't get a good photo, it doesn't mean I'm a terrible photographer, it just means that I'm human. Right. Because not everybody gets a great photo every time you go out. So I've been learning to show more of my failures and, and people actually appreciate it because it makes them feel better about their own failures when they go out. Yeah, I, that was one of the, I, I guess that was one of the other challenges too. Even if I did find a composition that I really liked, trying to make trying to shoot that photo and also trying to get all the b-roll mm -hmm. and make a video out of it i felt like yeah that, that there was a lot of um rushing around and you know you're trying to capture beautiful video so you only have so much time where the lighting is good and, right. and, and in that in that moment you're you're rushing trying to get some video that's going to look really beautiful that's going to you know really create a nice video but at the same time you're 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 trying to create that photo which your attention is kind of split between yeah. the two and then sometimes i've just screwed up the photo just because i was messing around so much that i didn't really take the time to to really focus on the photo and make that those you know micro adjustments that sometimes are necessary yeah. and um so it's, how do you deal with that little it, well, bit it's, it's tough i always feel like either i'm going to produce a really good video and a pretty good photo or a really good photo and a eh, okay video. It's it's hard to do really good at both. Some t some subjects lend themselves better to um, being able to do both at the same time. Like you know, some types of photography are not nearly as rushed. Like if you're out, I don't know, if you're photographing in a, in a forest area where the light's not changing, it's just all flat. You've got all the time in the world. That's easy. But if you're photographing a sunset that's tough because you know that lights changing really quickly so one of the things that you get better at is just like hit record on the camera and trust the autofocus and just like move the camera around to a couple different angles while you're doing it live and then just try to chop it together it's it's challenging though i i still struggle with it it's yeah i always feel like i either do good at video or good at photo but seldom do i do good at both at the same time it's tough yeah i've you know i i've even wanted to you know shoot the photo on one day and then kind of video the process of shooting the photo the next day but that doesn't always work either because right. the weather's not the same and it's obviously going to look like different days and obviously we're not trying to fool anybody but you know when you're trying to like i said you want to create a great experience for them to watch of a video but also you don't want to um you, you don't want to screw up the photo you know you try to do different things but yeah it's that that's probably the biggest thing of where i i found myself kind of backing away a little bit from shooting photography on the channel and i know that i do have some subscribers that really appreciated that but 
it just yeah that was um yeah that just became such a a, a stressful thing that i eventually was just like ah and then i you know but again that's a lot of the big purpose of why i overland and why i camp in the first place is i like to be out in beautiful areas and i like to shoot photography and i like to share that experience but yeah it's just interesting and you know we've been out here for a couple days now and with the whole filming and being in a new area not really being uh familiar and knowing where to go you know, we both tried to make videos, and I don't know that either one of us really successfully made a photo this, this, no, this I, trip. I might, have, I might have got a photo, but I'm not sure that I filmed myself getting the photo that I like best. That's, that's <laughs> another thing is, you know, a lot of times when you're photographing a forest scene where the light's moving a lot like it was last night, it, the light's only going to be there for a second. So you might get the photo, but did you get video of yourself getting the photo? And that happens to me a lot too, where, you know, I might've got a great shot, but I didn't document it. So I, I don't know if I can even put it in the, in the, you know, the video. So it is challenging. It's also, but I find the more challenging stuff is, and you probably feel the same way, the more challenging something is, the more rewarding it is when it finally works out and, you know, things line up and you, you film yourself getting a good photo it's, it's doubly rewarding because not only did you get the good photo, but you filmed yourself getting the good photo and then you, then you can pat yourself on the back and it, it, it's doubly rewarding sometimes. Now you touched on something also a little bit earlier in the video that I, I also struggle with because like you said, you, you, you might think you have a great photo and you film a lot of stuff around that yeah. photo. And, and you talk you, to the camera about how great this photo is. Yeah, and then you get back to Lightroom and you start mm -hmm. editing and you're like, hmm. Yeah. It's not so fantastic after all. Yeah. How, how do you deal with that? Uh, sometimes that video just won't air. <laughs> I'm, you know, I'm lucky enough that like YouTube is, it's a big deal to me, but it's not everything to me. So, you know, if, if I go to all the work to create a video and it's just anticlimactic, it makes me look like a bad photographer, that video probably won't see the light of day just because it's, it's like, yeah it's not worth the effort i don't feel the pressure to stick to a, a really vigorous regiment of you know uh, uh, you know publishing a video every wednesday or every sunday or twice a week or anything like that and that's that's freed me up to make sure that i'm actually happy with the stuff that i put out yeah I, because i don't know you know i have friends that publish once or twice a week I don't know how they do it. Yeah. They have to be out shooting a lot. Yeah. So, um, so you got a new rig. So you, you, you know, you, a places like where we're at right now, there's it, it. It takes a couple hours to get here, and there's nowhere, not even like a hotel close by. That'd yeah. be that'd be two hours away. So you got yourself kind of set up. You know, you were previously using a Tahoe, and you were kind of sleeping in the back. So how have you started to implement a little bit of like what would be considered overland gear into your photography well for me like being close to where i'm going to shoot sunrise has always been like the most important thing to me because there's nothing worse than not only getting up really early for a sunrise but then having to get up two hours early because you have a super long drive so like the, the whole overlanding thing has happened as a result of me just being lazy and not wanting to get up super early so uh I went with a Chevy ZR2 just because it's off-road capable. Um, I've had, I've had, I've been happy with my Chevys in the past. And then everything that I have in the back is just designed to uh, be quick and easy to set up breakdown. I don't want to set up a camp and like have this big elaborate setup that takes a really long time to compress back down. So that's the reason I have the hard shell uh, rooftop tent. It's made by James Broad because it's quick to set up, it's quick to tear down. Because a lot of times as a photographer, I'm getting to camp after sunset in the dark, and then I'm waking up before sunrise and then leaving. And I don't want to have a, a big elaborate setup to have to tear down. Um, so everything that I have is basically just designed to be quick and have stuff accessible and try to maximize the amount of storage in the back, but also trying to keep the storage in the back uh, 
you know, have some security with it because a lot of times I've got expensive crap in the back with cameras and tripods and all that. So that's why I've got the Alucab canopy is so I can lock it up and people can't break into it. Yeah. Yeah, and that's kind of the, like, and that's where I was at too. Like for me, um, I want to be able to, I, I, I want to be able to set up in just a couple minutes and I want to yeah. be able to be all torn down in a couple of minutes. Right. I kind of have this number in the, my head that I, I just roughly follow. I want to be able to be completely set up in 15 minutes and I want to be completely torn down in 15 minutes. Yeah. And, um, and I'm kind of getting there, but it's, you know, it's a, a long process and, uh, we will talk about that kind of stuff a little bit more in, um, in a more overland yeah. uh, topic video that I'm going to shoot with Nick uh, and he's going to post on his channel. So definitely check out his channel, especially if you guys are interested in photography. You know, Nick's got some really, really beautiful photography. I've even learned quite a few things um, by watching some of his videos and uh, even learned a few tips and tricks about my cameras uh, this last couple of days. So uh, if you guys are into photography and into landscape photography specifically, definitely go check out his channel and uh, subscribe and, you know, enjoy the, enjoy all the free good informational content. So anyways, thanks Nick. Awesome. I, I appreciate really it. appreciate you coming yeah. out and it's been a good couple of days. I look forward to hopefully us getting together a yeah. few more times down in the future and uh, shooting some more photography um, and maybe having a little better yeah. a little better luck I mean there was a lot of a lot of a lot of rushing around and you had a little difficulty getting into the location the first time because <laughs> the, the the Google route wasn't really the no, best route <laughs> no I mean I almost made it I only got stuck three times <laughs> and one of those times I was stuck for three hours um, but the second time went a little bit better. Yeah. Mountain passes with uh, snow drifts aren't always the best thing to do when you're alone and you don't have a winch. Yeah. Anyways, guys, um, if you have any comments or questions, please leave those down below. Mm -hmm. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, and we'll catch you guys again outside.